In this video, I'm going to talk about the problems I see with ChatGPT and why it will never replace developers. Now, you may be asking yourself, what is ChatGPT? Now, ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence or AI chatbot. It allows you to enter in a text prompt and it gives you an answer back. Now, this is built by a company called OpenAI, and how it can do this is it has another underlying technology called GPT 3.5, and this model was fed just a wealth of information across the web. In addition, it was fed billions of lines of source code. Now, we have seen other products like this um, recently, and one of those, the more famous one, is GitHub Copilot that allows you to predict the next line of code that you need to write. Now, with ChatGPT, you can give it a coding prompt or build me a to-do list in JavaScript, for example, and it will actually generate the code to do that to-do list. And on the surface, it looks really impressive. But when you start to think about all of the things that a developer or a coder does, you'll quickly realize that ChatGPT will never replace developers. Let's talk about the first problem I see with ChatGPT. I believe it's always going to be a tool. It will never replace developers. And there's a good reason why, because when you start looking at building websites, it is way more complex than it looks like on the surface. In fact, we asked ChatGPT to center a div on our last latest live shot. Let me show you that video and what we had to do to make this work. Let's see if it can make it. Hold on, let me go so to... Uh, let's let me clear out your page. Yeah. Just delete it all. Um, I can use everything, but... And then let's put it... You can put your styles in that tag, yeah. Right. Yeah, how they did it there. And then we'll just put in there get my uh, there you my go TV now TV. write a div and say hello world say div hello world in there and let's see what it does there we there go there goes it centered a div there we go <laughs> now as you can see from that video we had to do some actual coding to get the solution to work while it is true it knew how to use the flex, flex box to center the div, we had to actually put that on a web page, make sure that the CSS was in an inline style, and then actually write the div with the hello world. Now, could we have asked it more questions and it generated more things? It's possible and probably we could with some more effort, but then it comes to the question of like, how much time do I want to put into asking the GPT questions when I could have just coded it. And either way, I'm gonna to have to integrate that into my solution. So I'm never gonna be a completely novice non-coder and be able to use ChatGPT to build anything. I'm always going to need to know how to code. Now, once we move away from centering a div horizontally and vertically on a page, we go into real systems that have multiple files. It has, um, a domain that's kind of specific to the company that I'm working on. We have data models and tables, and we have different ways of building things. And sometimes we may be using more than one technology to build a website. And when you factor all of this in, it becomes really clear that you can't just write a text prompt to anything and it builds something because it doesn't have enough context at all. And so it will never get to the point to where it can replace the developer. Now, what you see is really good. It's really cool. It's gonna become a tool that really helps developers. But when you say, I'm gonna replace the developer, we're not even close to that yet because building software is simply too complex. So let's talk about flying cars. Now, you may be asking yourself, what does ChatGPT have to do with flying cars? Well, flying cars is the technology that's been promised since the 40s. And there's been many attempts to make these. Now, one of the real problems with, with building flying cars is its ability to land and be anywhere. For example, if you took your car out of the garage, you want to fly it to work. And that typically doesn't work. And this is one of the drawbacks to it, that you can't just land it anywhere at the, at the parking lot and work. And ChatGPT is kind of similar in this regard in that I can enter in a coding prompt. And when I look at it on the surface, 
it's really cool, except I've got to do a lot of work to massage it, to make it work inside of my app. And then it's like a 90% way there solution or maybe an 80% there solution. And that's never going to take over and fully replace a developer, just like a flying car will never replace your Honda Accord. The biggest problem I see with chat GPT is that it's not always right. Its level of accuracy is not 100% but its level of confidence is 100%. You'll get an answer from it and it'll say that this is the answer to your query. It doesn't give you multiple answers to choose from or things that you can browse around to see what's right. And what this means is if you want chat GPT to replace developers and it gives you a solution that's broken and you don't know how to code, how will you fix it? How will you ever get your solution to work if you don't know how to code because chat GPT doesn't always produce the right thing. Now, in many cases, your code could compile. It may look great on the surface, but underneath it has a bug in it that won't be seen until you push something to production. What do you do? And this is one of the reasons why ChatGPT will never replace developers because you have to be able to refactor the code that this AI is generating. The third problem I see with ChatGPT is copyright. Now, in order to understand this, let's talk a little bit about how these models are trained. And what ChatGPT is getting trained with is billions of lines of source code from companies or sites like GitHub. And while these repos may be public, the author of those repos may not want their software included inside your software without attribution. In fact, this is a common thing that's requested if you use someone's source code is attribute where it comes from. Now on the surface, it doesn't seem like ChatGPT does any of this at all. And so where did the source code come from? Did it come from one source or multiple sources? Or did it just completely copy it from one repo and give it to you? And this becomes a problem. So let's look at a common scenario, like if you are a freelancer or a contractor and you're doing a work for hire arrangement. And now typically these agreements are signed between you and a company and it says, hey, I'll pay you and you transfer the intellectual property to my company. Now here's the little known clause in all of those is that if the IP ever becomes in contest or the IP is, is in doubt, that you'll defend the company at your expense and this becomes very expensive. So, if you're using AI generated code, you don't know where that code comes from. And if the author at the end of this chain of writing software comes up and questions the IP for the company, that could cost you as the contractor lots of money. Now let's also look at the company. Let's say that you build a startup and you hire a bunch of developers to build software for you, but they use AI to generate it. That company may no longer control that IP because we don't know where the software came from. And if you say if your company makes $100 million or a $1 billion and the employee that you hired suddenly decided, you know what, I'm going to start my own business and compete with you directly. But the IP is in question because he didn't create it. The company didn't create it. Some AI, third party AI tool created it. And the IP is in question. Now, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not an attorney and I don't know how this is going to play out. But I do know this by fact is that when things become confusing, people set in and lawsuits will happen. In fact, when you look at Copilot from GitHub, you have to send your code base into GitHub for it to train it to give you accurate predictions. Now, Google and Tesla both don't allow Copilot in their shops. The reason is they're not going to transfer their IP to Microsoft. Because if your IP is transferred to an AI, does it suddenly become public domain? No one knows the answers to these questions. So Google says, this is our IP. We're going to guard it. Tesla says, this is our IP. We're going to take care of that. We're not going to transfer that because we want to own all of the things that we create. And I see this may be the biggest reason why ChatGTP and AI generated software will never take off. Recently, we had a live discussion about ChatGPT. In it, we show you some examples of how this technology works and the power of this tool. If that interests you, click on the video right here.